Our text says that David was a man. After, text says mine, after God's own heart. This high tribute that God, that the God of the Bible paid David is a combination of two passages of scripture. They are found in Psalms 89 and 20 and in 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14. Psalms 89 and 20 says, I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Again, that's Psalms 89 and 20. 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14 says, But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord have sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord have commanded him to be captain of his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. This was the prophet Samuel talking to Saul after Saul disobeyed uh, God at Gilgal. Um, uh, Samuel says, your kingdom will not continue. The Lord have sought after a man, sought him a man after his own heart. So when we combine the A clause of Psalms 89 and verse 20 and the B clause of 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14, then we get our text today. I have found David, Psalms 89 and 20, the A clause. A man after God's own heart. 1 Samuel 13 and 14. And by the way, when he says, I have found David, the word find implies, and I want you to hear this, that God was looking. As if God himself was ransackled. He had ransackled uh, all the families of Israel looking diligently throughout all Israel to find a man with the right character, with a divine stamp on him. I believe that this high tribute, since David is not called the man after God's own heart, but a man after God's own heart, then I believe today that God is looking for men and women, for that matter, who will be people after God's own heart. And I also believe just as God had to search diligently to find David, a true man or woman after God's own heart is hard find today in this day and time where most Christians are weak and seek the approval of the world and, uh, and aren't adamant about standing for Christ aren't adamant about sharing the faith uh, aren't adamant about uh, making a stand uh, where it really matters, it's a challenge to find a preacher, a teacher, a man or a woman who will be a man after God's own heart. I say to you, I submit to you that God the Holy Spirit is searching this camp. Even as I preach, looking for someone to you looking for someone to show himself strong on their behalf, looking for a man after God's own heart. David, uh, the man whom God found, was not even at the time when the Lord said this in 1 Samuel chapter 13. David had not yet even been introduced in the scripture at all when God 
rejected Saul and began to find the man. See, he wasn't looking, I need you to hear me, for David. He was looking for a man after his own heart. See, there is a, there is a criterion that God is looking for. There, there's, a, there's the kind of person that the Lord is looking for. The question is whether or not you or I are that individual. Amen. This, uh, in uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 13, this is where um, um, Samuel is rejected. And David is not introduced in the scripture until chapter 16. And the funny thing about that is he's introduced as an afterthought. He's introduced as an, oh, by the way. He's not introduced with grandeur. He's introduced as a, a matter of the last resort. For God had told the prophet Samuel, go to Jesse's house. And in Jesse's house, you will find the next man who will be anointed king of Israel. Samuel goes to Jesse's house and Jesse parades before Samuel, and we talked about this a little last week, seven of his eight sons. And God rejected every one of them. Now the prophet is in a quandary at this point because he knew that he knew the voice of God. He couldn't have gotten that wrong. Lord, you sent me to Jesse's house. So the prophet Samuel uh, says to, uh, to Jesse in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11, and Samuel said to Jesse, are here all thy children? Have I actually seen all of your boys? And, uh, and he, Jesse said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. Yeah, he keeps the sheep, but he's the youngest. <laughs> Certainly he can't be the one. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, that is, he was of a reddish color and withal goodly to look to. It was a, 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 of a ruddy uh, color and withal of a beautiful countenance. The scripture tells us that uh, he was good looking and, uh, and reddish in color and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, and he for this is he. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. King James says, brethren. Can you imagine how his brothers <laughs> had to have felt that the baby, the youngest of eight boys, is, is being anointed. And not just anointed, but anointed to be the next monarch. Next king of Israel. Yeah. Oh my, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So David here, uh, who turned out to be the person that the Lord was looking for, was actually uh, the one who was chosen because they'd run out of options. Praise the Lord. I don't know where God is today on his search for the next man after God's own heart. But I sure want to be one of those that the Lord look on favorably and say, I can use him. Pray for me, if you will. Let's look at the phrase, man after God's own heart. And uh, let's look at what it means. But before we uh, deal with this particular phrase, let's look at what kind of man David was. And let's view what kind of man David wasn't. Um, although David was a man 
after God's own heart. King David was not a perfect man. I want you to let that sink in. Even though he was indeed a man after God's own heart. And this is Paul writing about it, uh, Luke writing about it in the New Testament. David and all of them are long since dead by now. Luke writes and says that he's a man, he was a man after God's own heart, but he was not a perfect man. According to 1 Samuel, chapter 21, verse 10 through 15, David displayed cowardice when caught by, 2 Samuel, excuse me, chapter 21, when he was caught by the Philistines. You remember that? And uh, he's there, and they got him. And he was trying not to be recognized. I'm sorry, excuse me, that is actually 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 21. Uh, trying not to be recognized, says, and David arose and fled uh, that day for dear, for fear of Saul. Fear is what controlled him. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. David was afraid, and he went to Achish the king of Gath, he ran into the army of the enemy, the army of the Palestines, huh? right outside them. And, and the servants of Achish said unto him, is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, singing Saul have slain thousands and David ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart and was so afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. He's afraid. And he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself uh, uh, mad in their hands. And look at this scribble. That is, he began to, to slobber. Uh, and scribble on the door, scratch on the, the doorpost, and, 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 and he let his spittle fall upon his beard. He pretended to be uh, crazy. Uh, and, and then said, Akish, uh, unto his servants, Lo, yea, see this man is mad. Wherefore then have you brought him to me? That is, the king did not even view him as a worthy opponent. Wouldn't waste my time fighting uh, a coward. This was not the best light of King David. Not only did David do this and displayed cowardice, but David was also an adulterer. According to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11, uh, we find the Bible says, and it came to pass, after the years were expired. Oh, I feel you're getting tight on me in here. After the years were expired, were expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants uh, with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged uh, Rabbah. And, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. David should have been at war, but he stayed in Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David rose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And that's all we're told about her. We're not told anything about her character. We're not told whether or not uh, she had other traits. But we're told that physically she was beautiful. And David sent and inquired after the woman. 
And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And uh, that should have stopped him right there. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned to her house. This was not a flattering episode in the life of David. He also committed murder. Second Samuel chapter 12 and verse uh, 9 when Nathan um, indicted him. And Nathan said to him, Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? You, you disobeyed God's word to do evil in his sight. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife. And trying to cover it up, you married his wife and you killed him because you got his wife pregnant and hast slain him with the sword that you killed Uriah the Hittite, have had him killed with the sword of the children of Ammon. In 2 Samuel chapter 13, we see another picture of David where uh, he didn't look too good. 2 Samuel, excuse me, chapter 13, verse 21 says, But when the king heard all these things, he was very wroth. What things am I referencing? His son, Ammon, raped his daughter, Tamar. Yes, he did. And Tamar, after uh, being raped by her brother, a half-brother, uh, uh, she was Absalom's sister. When David found out that this had gone on in his family, the Bible teaches that he was angry, but he did nothing. He didn't respond. He didn't bring correction. He didn't bring discipline. He didn't act. He got emotional, but he didn't put anything in place. Had he handled that family situation? See, and instead, try to pretend everything was all right. Had he handled it, Absalom wouldn't have killed Tamar. Or, or Abnon, and he would not have ro risen up against his father. Right. Let me tell you something, men, you have to uh, handle your business. Right. Parents, we have, to, we have to make things right, right. in our home right. when things go wrong. You can't just pretend and look the other way. Right. Oh, there are many who have been victims of incest because she stayed with the man. Daughter came and said, Mama, Daddy ain't doing right. In some cases, biological dad, some cases, stepdads. And, 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 and Mom believed the, the dad or believed the man and didn't uh, believe her daughter. And the girl grew up jaded and hurt and don't trust anybody because of things like that. Sometimes it's an uncle. Sometimes it's a uvuncular friend. Praise the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes we, we see things and instead of dealing with it. Oh, we're upset about it now. Upset. Disappointed. But upset and disappointment, these are emotions. These are not actions. Some things call for action. And uh, dad, uh, one of the keys to uh, providing the right action is you got to be there. You got to be home. Can't leave your family. Raise your children. Praise the Lord. Be 
present. And when you are present, someone said something to me that I thought was profound. Said to me, uh, Pastor, uh, you often talk uh, about uh, uh, dads being in the house, but there are many of us who grew up who had our fathers in the house physically. But that was it. That was it. He was there. You could see him. You could talk to him. You could touch him. But he exercised no influence. He laid down no law. He had nothing to say about anything. Just that. Well, that's the problem with David. He was just there. Isn't that something? Fathers, don't be just there. But be an influence. A positive influence. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and God will bless you. Let me go on and preach this because I, I feel that you all don't hardly like me this morning. Uh, no. David was not a perfect man. He was far from being a perfect man. But he was still a man after God's own heart. And the man that the Lord, the Bible says this about in Acts 13 and 23. Speaking of David, it says, Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, who is Jesus. No, not perfect, but the man to whom God named the royal covenant after. Man to whom God gave, uh, uh, the, uh, used his name as a title of the mercy covenant. And the covenant, the covenant that is responsible for Israel's existence today. Whether you like him or not, whether you voted for him or not, Regardless of what the news tells you, in your lifetime, one of the most extraordinary things took place. If you watch CNN and MSNBC, they made you think that it was the worst move in the world and that it created hostilities on behalf of the Palestinians. But if you watch God and uh, reputable newscasts, you will see that it was a promise made by several presidents voted into law since 96 or so. And the others promised to do it. And of all men, it took Donald John Trump to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. So what is the significance of that? That's what David did. David made Jerusalem the capital of Israel. King David did that. What a powerful, what a powerful move on his part. David did it. And then President Trump came along and put the embassy there, which is a powerful statement and I believe it will gain us as a nation even more favor with God because I know this see I didn't I didn't I didn't start keeping up with politics the other day I know this when Sharon prime minister of Israel gave back portions of the Golan Heights in Gaza to the Palestinians when he gave it back a massive stroke hit him and the man never recuperated because God gave Israel that land and God made a promise and he made the promise in David. Acts 13 and 34 says, and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. The covenant is called the sure mercies of David. Isaiah 55 and 3 says, incline your ear 
and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. Are you praying for me? In 2 Samuel chapter 7. The Bible says this beginning with the 8th verse. Now therefore so shall thou say unto my servant David. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. I took thee from the sheep coat, that is from the pasture, and from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. I made you great, David. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell uh, in a place of their own. That's why God brought them back to Israel. That's why they're coming up and celebrating their 70th anniversary being in the place where God planted them. And move no more. Neither shall the children of the wicked afflict them anymore as before time. And look at this. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord Tell if thee, not only am I going to bless your people, but I want to tell you, David, that I am going to build you a house. Amen. David wanted to build God a house. God says, no, I'm going to build you one. And when, look at this, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee. And shall, look at this, and which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Look at this. Now, I want you to know David's earthly dynasty ended four centuries after this prophecy. But the prophecy continued in Jesus Christ until this day. And he shall build a house. Look at this, verse 13. And he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Praise the Lord. And look at this. And I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And if he commit iniquity, and part of this is about Solomon, and part of it is about Christ. And if he shall commit iniquity, moving from David, after David is dead, uh, his son Solomon would take over, but he's pointing to Jesus Christ. And if he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But look at this. My mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. And thy throne shall be established forever. The mercy that God placed on the people of Israel, which is called the sure mercies of David, God promised never to take those mercies away. This is why no matter the nation. It matters no matter the country, no matter the enemy, nobody will defeat Israel. They won't because God's sure mercies is with that nation. Even though right now the nation is not spiritually where it should be. God acknowledges all that. He says, but I still won't take my mercy from them like I took it from Saul. God has a special relationship with Israel. And the Jews are going to preach the gospel. 
they are going to turn back to the Lord. He will fulfill his covenant that he named after David. Are you with me? I'm going to preach in just a minute. Praise the Lord. But, uh, uh, you know, I get, I, get, I get all into this technical stuff because I just love it. But I heard, you know, David, again, he, he was not a perfect man. He was not far from it. But uh, he's still the namesake of the sure mercies of David. Psalm 89, verse 3 says, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever. PLO, forget about it. Arafat, he's dead and gone. And uh, uh, Iran, you'll never defeat Israel. Syria, Assad, you'll never defeat Israel. Praise the Lord. And none of the rest of them. And if America ever turns on Israel, America will not defeat Israel because God made a promise. Even the Edomites, the Edomites, oh my, and then the children of Edom were considered to be impregnable. Nobody could fight like the Edomites. No one made war like the Edomites. The Edom and the Edomites do not exist today. But you can't turn the, turn the television on and the news is not saying something about Israel. They are a people whom God has preserved lo all of these years. Even their religion, their original religion is still in place and their original language is still in place. Only God could take a tiny nation about the size of the state of Florida and do these things and this nation is surrounded by enemy nations, surrounded by Arab nations. Let me tell you something. Great Britain became Britain when it turned on Israel. It lost its greatness because when you to go against Israel, you go against the sure mercies of David. And you can't get past those sure mercies. Are you with me? What a man, what a man. Now, let's see why God called David a man after his own heart. Let's see what the term literally means, and I'm going to send you home. Uh-huh. What made David special? What was it? I've, 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 I've told you, I pointed out some of his shortcomings, and we make no, no, no excuse for him. I didn't try to justify him. I, I read to you what's in the Bible, and that's part of what I love about the Bible. The Bible doesn't show just one side of its heroes as we would do, uh, as the New York Times would do, as other publications would do. No, the Bible shows the whole picture. Let you see the strengths and the weaknesses of Abraham. We saw the strength and the weaknesses of Moses. We see the strengths and the weaknesses of David. We see the strengths of Jesus Christ. For Christ had no weaknesses. Good God Almighty. But everybody else, we see their strength. We see the strength of Samson. And we see the weakness of Samson. So now what was it uh, that made David different? I feel my help. Mm, uh, one of the things that made David special. Praise the Lord. And when I tell you what it is, it, it won't be anything that you're going to find uh, earth shattering, but it is something that is rare. David was a man uh, that when he saw his sin, for he, when he looked at his sin, David saw his sin for what it was. And when he repented of his sin, he truly repented. David never tried to rationalize his sin. He never tried to make his sin right. When he sinned, he repented. David did a Psalms 32. David said, blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Oh, I'm letting the Bible do the preaching. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile. 
Then he gives his own testimony. When I kept silent, when I didn't repent, my bones waxed oh, through my roaring all day long. That is, when I didn't confess my sins, it affected me. It took all of my joy. It was pathological. It caused me to get sick. And my days were messed up. He said, depression dropped in. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. And look at this. And my moisture is turned into the drought of summer. In a way, you look at that when a person dries up like that, that their personality is gone. Their joy is gone. Their happiness is gone. Sin will do that for you. Then I heard David say, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and my iniquities uh, have I not hid I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquities of my sins uh, for this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when, uh, when thou mayest be found surely in the floods of great waters they shall come they shall not come nigh him and then I heard David say uh, thou art my hiding place uh, thou shalt preserve me from trouble thou shalt compass me about with the songs of deliverance you see when he confessed his sin his joy came back when he confessed his sin, God gave him a new song. I know that we have the CCM music now, a Christian contemporary, and we got the quartet and we got this, that, and the other. But we ought to make up a new category and call it songs of deliverance. Sing about his goodness. Sing about how he brought you out. Sing about how he set you free. Those are good lyrics. I'm going down for the third time. But Jesus brought me out. Good God Almighty, the devil thought he had me. But I got away. That's a good song of deliverance. Somebody say yes. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I heard him. I heard him. I heard him. He did a Psalms 38. Are you praying for me? I heard David say, oh Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath. Why are you angry, Lord? Don't rebuke me then. Neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Hallelujah. That, hold on, Lord. Good God Almighty. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. And there is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. He said, for mine iniquities are gone over my head as a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. God, I messed up and I can't even bear this load. He said, my wounds stink and are corrupt be because of my foolishness. Notice he blames himself. He puts the onus on himself. He says to the Lord, I did this. He said, I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long for my loins are filled with loathsome, with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feebled and sore broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness in my heart. Lord, all of my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart panteth and my strength faileth for the light of mine eyes is also, it also is gone from me. 
He's, he's talking about the effect of his sin. What happened when he went against God? Verse 17, he says, for I am ready to hope. That is, he says, I'm so low that I'm ready to give up and my sorrow is continually before me. For I, I will declare my iniquity and I will be sorry for my sin. When he decided that he would cry out and declare his iniquity and be sorry for his sin, then he saw where God would deliver him. Saints, some of us, all we need to do is just cry out to the Lord and say, God, it's not my mother, not my father, not my sister, not my brother, but it's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. God, I messed up. I can't even blame the gang I was running with. I can't even blame the partner I did it with. I can't even blame my, my friends and my family. Lord, it was just me. David learned the secret. And when David repented of his sins, God gave him deliverance. Unlike Saul, when Saul was rebuked, and when Saul was told that he'd been rejected, the Bible says here in 2 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 15, here's how Saul responded to being rejected. It said, and Samuel, good God Almighty, after having been rejected, and Samuel arose and got him from Gilgal and went to Gabeah of Benjamin, and Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about 600 men, and Saul and Jonathan and his son and the people that were present with him abode in Gabeah in Benjamin, but the Palestines encamped in Mishmash. What is the point you're making, preacher? You don't see why Saul repented. Saul said, oh well, I'm rejected. I'm just gonna go on and do my own thing. I'm just gonna do Saul. That's the problem. There's got to be something in you when your heart is right with God. When you find out that you've done God wrong, somewhere in there, you ought to cry out to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Good God Almighty. David cried and said, God, forgive me. God, don't chasten me. Why you angry? Hallelujah. And it was David who said, weeping may endure for a night, but our joy cometh in the morning. This is why he was said to be a man after God's own heart. That is, he sought the Lord. He sought the Lord. The first meaning, let's look at this phrase here, after God's own heart, means that he was a man who was loyal to God. Upper room, do we have any men in here who will say, I'll be a man who is loyal to God. It may cause me to fall out with my friends. It may cause me to fall out with my family. I'm talking to the women too. Do I have anybody in here whose first priority is to be loyal to the scripture, loyal to the God of the Bible? You're not ashamed of him. You'll stand for him anywhere, in front of anybody, and say, for God I'll live, and for God I'll die. Yeah, yeah, Lord, I want to be saved. I'm going to be liar. Somebody lift your hands and tell God thank you. Loyalty to God will cause people to walk away from you. Loyalty to the God of the Bible may cause you to lose that promotion. Loyalty to the God of the Bible may make your friends talk about you. But if you're loyal, if you're loyal to the Lord, then the Lord will be loyal to you. And I'm here 
here to tell you, can't nobody, can't nobody, can't nobody do you like Jesus? No, nobody. Yeah, yeah. Go on and wave those lawyer hands. Somebody may feel this way. You may feel like they got you out on an island by yourself. You may feel like no one understands, but you ought to tell the Lord, I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. Even when I don't understand, Lord, I wait. Lord, I wait. Good God Almighty, when Job was going through, the load got heavy. Job got discouraged. He became suicidal. Job said, oh, that I could just die and stay dead and hide me in the grave until my trial pass and then let me come back alive. Then he thought again and he said, no, if a man die, shall he live again? He said, if I give up and if I die, I'll never see my victory. Well, I'm not going to die. All the days of my appointed time shall I wait till my change come. You ought not give up, but you ought to declare, I'll go through this. I'll endure this. I'll be loyal. Wait on him because my change is gonna come. Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Ah. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord in here. Oh, glory. Now you have to admit, this is really a good place to say high five three people and tell them to wait on it. Wait on him! Lord! Lord! Oh, oh, Lord! Look at that shout coming. God Almighty, lift your hands and tell him yes. Man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. It also means a man agreeable to my mind. When the Lord looked at David, he said, you're the kind of man that I can use. And let me tell you something. You have a right to wave your hands. You have a right to praise the Lord. You have a right to get excited because when God anointed David, he anointed a boy. He, he anointed him when he was looking for someone to be a man after his own heart. He anointed the boy. Am I right? In chapter 13, he says, I'm going looking for a man after my own heart. In chapter 16, he found the boy and anointed him because he said the boy is the man after my own heart. The boy grew up to be a man. He grew up to be a good man. He didn't grow up 
to be a perfect man, but he grew up to be God's man. Some of you, you've gone through some things in your life and the devil is telling you, you are disqualified. Well, I come to give you good news to tell you that the devil is a liar for the same God who saw David through, the same God who lifted David up, the same God who elevated him, he's here right now. Now go on and praise him despite your shortcomings, despite your errors, despite your mistakes. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Yeah! Ain't that right, Sawyer? Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need about 10 or 15 people who messed up along the way, but you got it right, you got it right, you got it right, hallelujah. You messed up, but you got it right. I just need you to just lift your hands and praise the Lord and just begin to leap up and down and thank him. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. shortcomings wasn't David's shortcomings but I guarantee you David said there's none righteous no not one all have sinned and come short of the glory of God but isn't it something when you think that God can take us pick us up clean us up dust us off Set us straight and give us power, power, power. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Glory. Good God. Somebody pray the Lord. Somebody pray the Lord. While you're shouting, you ought to be shouting with, don't you write me off in your mind. Because if David could make a comeback, if David could do it, and we have a better covenant. We have a better covenant. We've got Jesus. Yeah! Woo! You who are streaming, watching, give God praise.
me from a mighty long way shout. See you wave your hand. Mm -hmm. Come and stand right here. Oh Lord. I like a hairdo too. Oh Lord. God knew that between here and here, He would do some things that would get him toe out the frame. Between here and here, oh Lord. And God knew between here and here, some mistakes would be made along the way. But he still anointed him anyhow. Go to wave your hand and said, God knew when I first got started that sometime I'd stumble and fall. But the Lord anointed me anyhow. Oh, you ought to thank the Lord. Somebody praise his name. You ought to thank the Lord. 
when you when you when you stumble, preacher, it didn't catch God off guard. He knew when you said, Lord, I'll go all the way. He knew you meant it. But he knew between where you were and all the way, some things would happen. But he says, when I put my favor on you, I need about 10 people who are in a low place. When I put my favor on you, I need about 10 people who are in a low place to just begin to praise him. Because when I put my favor on you, I knew, I knew you would come to this place. I knew you would go through this juncture. But I also knew that I picked the right person. Woo! I knew, I knew. Let me tell you something. Jesus said to his disciples, you didn't choose me. Tremina, the Lord said, I chose you. And I knew when you were a little girl and all that you went through in between, I'd raise you up. Make you a woman of God. Give you direction. Give you clarity. Isn't God good? Isn't the Lord good? Coach, he takes us through. But what he, what he pays attention to along the way, what determines whether he can bring you where he wants to bring you is how you treat your failures. How you respond when you messed up. Do you just go through the motions? Shrug your shoulders? God's a forgiving God. No big deal. Or does it break your heart that you broke his heart? Does it crush you that you, that you crushed him? When Saul got rejected, Saul said, okay. But when David got checked, Psalm 32, Psalm 38, Psalm 51. We get all these psalms. And God said this. I'm done. God said this about David. He says, he will do all of my works. Man after my own heart who will fulfill all my will. David, in David we find the ideals of a king. I'm getting ready to pray. Don't Nobody move. He was a shepherd and a soldier. A statesman and a saint. He, in, he united Israel. He united the tribes. He conquered Israel's foes. Gave Israel a national consciousness. And made it great. He wrote half the Psalms and prepared the temple. He put the archives in order. He brought order to the priesthood. He founded the Messianic dynasty. All the later kings of Judah were, were measured by him. He was indeed a man after God's own heart. A shadow of Christ lying across the pages of Israel's dynasty, writes John Phillips. He was indeed a man of God. A man of God whom the Lord used because of and despite of. God's using all of us because of and despite. Uh, some of us, uh, Junior, bring to the table stuff that God can use. But for every person who brings usable things to the table, we also bring things that the Lord has to wash us from, cleanse us from. Recognizing these truths is the first quality, brother Reeves, to being a man after God's own heart. I'm through preaching. What a word. Happy Every man, maybe the altar might not be sufficient, may have just collected due to the church. Every man today, every person, because you know, the men's conference is coming, but I can't. 
saved is because, you know, right. uh, when he says David, a man after God's own heart. You, you know, Christ died for everybody now. Everybody. And, and the Bible is, you know, you know good and well, uh, there, there are women after God's own heart. Because God, God, you know, we ain't, we ain't got to even go into that. Right. Amen. Because that's, that's just, that's, Christ died for all. But, but, but when you're talking about the king and the dynasty and history. See, the, 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 the passage was a comparison. It compared how David responded. And how Saul responded. Both men as king messed up. And technically, you know, you could argue. Now, no one could argue. Killing the sheep when Samuel was late. Now, Samuel was late. Now, he was late. Saul panicked, but Samuel was late. Huh? And okay, uh, kill all the Amalekites. Okay, I'm going to kill them all, but now... Uh, you know, all this valuable stuff right here. And, and, and here's their king. And, and, and maybe we can, you know, work something out. If I spare some. Now, that's what God saw reject. King David, Bathsheba. Come here. Come get your love. Uh, and then killing her husband to cover it up. Now you can argue, you can make an easy argument that David's transgressions was worse than Saul. You could argue that. The point you can't argue is how the men respond. If I be a man of God, and I am, that will determine what I've just laid before you today, how far you go in this life, and how much favor you have or will not have with the God of the Bible. You can say, well, pastor, I'm going to just avoid the whole thing. I'm just, I'm just not going to mess up in any way. We'll see how long that's going to last. That's not an option. It's how you respond. David was a man after God's own heart. Everybody here today who want to respond right. Every man who says it's time for me now. To be that man after God's own heart. It's my turn. It's, it's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn to be that man. I want to stand like David stood. I want to unite my family. Hey, brothers, I want to save my community. I saw something so beautiful yesterday. I saw something so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It was so wonderful. It was so awesome. And it made me feel awful at the same time. I saw a beautiful, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. I saw a beautiful white couple. Tall, ruggedly handsome white guy. Amen. With his beautiful brunette white wife. And they had two beautiful, precious, glorious, rambunctious sons so beautiful what was wrong with that both of the boys were black I didn't ask any questions but typically it's a crack mother or there was nobody who look like them, who would step in. I told you it was beautiful. My, my personal thought, the 
for some blessed boys because them people are going to raise those boys. They love those boys. They went, in, they went and found them. At the airport, coming back, coming back to Raleigh. Flew out and got the boys. Talking to them, explaining to them what was going on, little boys. You know, little boys in the airport, they can get antsy. Well, mommy's getting ready to put you on the plane. And now, they weren't their boys by birth. She goes, they were not like Meghan Markle and Barack Obama. They, were, they weren't mixed. You can look at them and tell that. So that meant that man, y'all don't like me. Too, too honest for your honor. Too honest, too factual. Too factual, too honest, because there ain't a thing you can do with it. I don't agree with that. There's nothing for you to disagree with. His mama, Obama's mama's white. It's white. It's white. His daddy was African, black. Megan's mama was black, and his daddy was white. These little boys, you can look at them and tell they weren't mixed with anything. Hair tells you that. <laughs> Y'all know when we're not mixed. You know. Amen. Amen. And if you don't know, just get happy a little bit. It'll speak every time. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's the most beautiful thing. It's the most beautiful thing. And they're going to love those boys. And those boys, those two little boys, won life's lottery. And you know what? You could tell by looking at them. They were two brothers. And this couple wouldn't take one and leave the other. And I said, God bless them. But where are we? Most places like that are full filled with us. Our children. Sometimes we've been praying 40 years, waiting 30 years for the Lord to bless us to conceive. He did. It was just another way. They're waiting. It's our time. Yes, sir. To yes, be men yes, after God's own heart. Our time. David said, who is left here of the household of Saul that I can show kindness to? Spared Nabal and went back and got Abigail. Yes. Come here, baby. You, you, you need to be with me because your husband's a fool. That's right. That's right. No, he did it. Yeah. What you got to say about that? He did it. It's time for us on the New Testament morals yes, sir. to rise up. And be men after God's own heart. We've got to save our people. 81% of the time, you know the, you know the stats. 81% of the time, if the brother would take care of the baby, the sister would not abort the baby. It's a man's thing. Guys, go home. Talk to your children. Love them. Talk to them about the Lord. Talk to them about something other than what they hear all day. They hear about sports, movies, junk all day. And when you ask them how was your day, look at them when you ask them and wait for an answer. And don't accept one word answers. I told my children when I was raising them, when I ask you how was your day, don't just say fine. How you doing? Good. No, I want right. talk to me. That's right. Talk to me. I'm looking at you. Talk to me. Because I don't know what fine means. I don't know what good means. And I sure don't know all, what all right means. Because it doesn't mean what you say. When you say I'm all right, you, that means you don't have any problems. So I'm not proud to tell you they're all right and go into the next room and blow their own brains out. All right. You said, now I thought it was all right. Brothers, we're going to be men after God's own heart. Take our place in our communities. 
look like somebody. Keep your pants pulled up. Raise your boys to be gentlemen and your girls to be ladies. These aren't old fashioned uh, morals and standards. They're godly standards. And they're standards that you see every day when you go across town. The world got us thinking that everybody's doing this crazy stuff. No, 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 no. no you, got, you got winners out there who've been groomed to win from the time they were born. They're being groomed to rule over you. Come here, boy. Yes, sir. They're being groomed to be his master. You groom him to be a master. That's what you do. Raising their child. The, 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 the them, I tell white people, Asians, everybody. Hispanic, everybody's raising their folk to win. But us. We're raising ours. Well, we're going to show you how to get on the system. And that, they got some stuff out there. That, 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 they got that welfare and all that stuff with this and that. And it can help you. And you get on that. And that's all you got to do. Or you just slip out the house and get your girlfriend pregnant. Go around the corner. And the government will take care of everything. And everything's And don't you work hard now. If somebody asks you, are you working hard? Just or hardly working. You tell them, I'm hardly working. Don't you work hard. And don't you go to school and learn how to talk. Uh, and use good uh, diction and language because you'll be accused of talking white. So you, so you don't want to talk white. You want to talk black. How do you talk black? You talk stupid. That's how, that's how you talk black. And oh, oh yeah, by the way, all that pretty skin of yours, let's mess that up as soon as possible. And you got a dumb mama because we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna pierce his ears. They're not. We're going to pierce his ears already. How old are you? At nine. Nine years. I've seen a little boy nine years old with earrings. Now, how, how can you at nine years old even know something like that? You ought to at least put the camera on. You ought to at least let the boy get grown. Then mess him up at nine. I'm getting ready to pray. I'll get on these little tantrums. I have one, I, you know, uh, don't get me started. But another thing. Everything don't belong online. Got your little baby online. Little boy laying there half naked online. Don't you know if pedophiles are trolling? Sitting there looking at your child masturbating online. And there you go being, you know, not thinking. Everything. Well, you Facebook areas, I just left the church. Yes, we're on our way to the restaurant. There you go. And then you got, you got dumb people who, who chime in. You ain't saying anything. Yes, it's hot out here. This is North Carolina. It's June, North Carolina. Got to be hot. It's humid today. It's time. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for being a good sport. It's time. To shift our thinking. Father. It is our desire. To be men. And women. After your. Own heart. Thank you father that you put David's story, the strengths and the weaknesses in the Bible. We do not read of his failures and offer them as excuses for our own failure. But we read his failures and we see in them hope for us that he, like the rest of us was human and failed to things even though our fall may or may not be what his was. We're glad that you recorded the fall because Father, we have failed. Hallelujah. 
Your word declares that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Father, we're grateful today to know that you're able to take us as you took David and dust us off, clean us up. The image that God gives me, mothers, is that of, praise the Lord, when you have to clean, change the diaper, dads, moms, of your little beautiful newborn child. Oh, the a beautiful baby, but the beautiful child made a mess. You're not going to destroy the child, kill your baby, or hurt your baby, but you quickly clean the baby and restore them to their previous pristine condition. Thank you, Lord, for restoring us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm in the Bible. You says, as a father pitieth his children, so does the Lord pity those that call upon him. Now, Father, use us to be men and women after your own heart. Oh God, as we make ready for our men's conference, make us ready. Get us right. Oh God. Now we praise you and we thank you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen.